Well, it's almost here. It's Christmas Eve. Hopefully for you, all of the preparing and the rushing around and the buying and the wrapping is almost finished. And you can sit down and take a few moments with us and worship the coming of the Christ child. Today's online service was recorded earlier today at our morning Christmas Eve service. And I hope that you enjoy being with us as we worship together. May your Christmas be merry and bright, and may you experience the presence of our loving God surrounding you this holiday season. Well, good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're going to start this morning with a medley of carols. We're going to start with the way in the major, and hark the herald angels sing, joy to the world and the little town of Bethlehem. Thank <laughs> you.
to have everybody here. What an exciting day. Christmas Eve has come at last, and I'm so glad that you're here. And I want to talk a little bit about why we're here. You know, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, and I have one of those epiphany moments, you know, those aha moments, and something fully formed comes into my brain, and I think, oh, that would make a great sermon. But I better write it down now, because I'll forget in the morning. So I grab my phone, and in the dark, I'm sending myself an email, you know, and I'm typing away with one finger in the dark. And I notice something about those late night emails. When I'm one finger typing in the dark, I often misspell words, but my phone will correct it for me, right? My phone will correct every word that I misspell except the word God. You would think that my phone, who is smarter than I am, would know how to spell the word God or where to use the word God in a sentence. But it doesn't. It doesn't even offer it as a suggestion. And that says a lot. I think that we need more God in the world. And I don't mean by that that we should go around making people believe in our religion. I mean that we should make an effort to notice the sacred so that the sacred is an extraordinary part of our ordinary day. And I mean to notice the God that Jesus knew, the one who hangs out with the least likely, the one who stays when life is crappy, the one who hopes and dreams and opens and creates in pure, unabashedly abundant love. I think we need more love in the world, the love we feel when we gaze for the first time on a newborn child, the love that is embodied in the child whose birth we celebrate today. That is why we are here. We are here to open ourselves to the sacred, to more God, and to love, to a love that is so long expected and much needed.
times when I drive up the fifth side road up here and I pass by the place where a Wendat village thrived some 400 years ago. I imagine myself in the longhouse on a cold December night gazing up through the chimney holes in the roof and watching the smoke rise and mingle with the stars. And I think about Jumanado, creator, and I am grateful for the many wise indigenous voices who taught me that aspect of God. We gather today on the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Chippewa people on Treaty 18 land. And though that village is now a wheat field and the descendants of its peoples were displaced to Oklahoma, I remember that their roots are here and this is sacred ground. <coughs> And I recommit to working toward right relations among all people this holy day. Please join with me in our call to worship. When you see print on the screen, when it's white print, I'll do the talking. And when it's yellow print, you join in and we all speak together. The day has arrived. The time has come. We have lived in hope, prayed for peace, and experienced joy. We give you thanks for sending us Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, whose life, death, and resurrection have become for us the way to find you, to know you, to join with you in creating your new heaven and new earth. In hopeful anticipation, we bask in the love the living Christ, of the living Christ as we welcome him again into our hearts. Listen for the word in the words of the prophet. We open our hearts to the word in the words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Let us sing together, Come, Come, Emmanuel.
something really special in this box. So I have in this box a story. It is the Christmas story. <gasps> what is it? My goodness. Do you know the Christmas story? We talked a little bit about it just now. The story of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. Well, the story starts with Mary. Mary found out she was going to have a baby. Oh my goodness, that's scary. She never had a baby before. What's it like to have a baby, she wondered. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be a mom. What's it like to be a mom, she wondered. She had so many questions. Now this Mary is made of something really special. Can you smell it? Come smell it. Can you smell it? What do you think that is? Does it smell like anything familiar? Honey, maybe? It's made of beeswax. Isn't that amazing? Well, Mary starts this story. She's pretty important. She's the mom of Jesus. So let's put Mary on the table here. Why don't you put her wherever you think she needs to go? Right there. That's a good place. And Mary's husband's name was Joseph. This is Joseph. Joseph was pretty scared, too. He wasn't sure about this whole parenting thing, getting married thing. He wasn't sure. But would you like to place Joseph Hilson? Put Joseph on the... Wherever you think he needs to go on the table. You do the next one. You'll do the next one, okay? Oh, you have whoppers. Okay, you have the whoppers. <laughs> Joseph was really scared, but an angel came. An angel came and said, don't be scared, Joseph, it's okay. You and Mary are going to be amazing parents. And you're going to have a son and you're going to call him Jesus. So Joseph said, I guess that's okay. I guess it's all right. Who would like to place the angel? Would you like to place the angel? Where, would, where do you think the angel needs to go? Be very careful because they're very fragile. Think she'll go there? She won't fall over? She's doing pretty good. He's doing right. So Mary and Joseph, they got this letter from the government that told them, you have to go to Bethlehem because there's going to be a census. It means we're going to count how many people are in our area. So you need to go there. And Mary's like, I'm really pregnant. I don't know if I want to go to Bethlehem. But they went anyways. They went to Bethlehem. And there was a lot of people there for the census. And there were no hotels available at all. And so they went and they knocked on the door of one of the hotels, and the man there said, I don't have any rooms, but, you know, out back there's a stable. And the straw is pretty warm, and it's pretty comfortable, and I think you'll be okay there. So Mary and Joseph said, okay, that's the only place there's going to be to live. Let's go, and let's be with the cows. Can you put the cows somewhere? And the sheep. Would you like to place the sheep someplace? Place it on the table where you think it would look good. And the donkeys. Do you like to do the donkey? Oh, we'll let them out them. There we go. All right. So they went and they were in the stable, and all of a sudden Mary says, this baby's coming. I'm going to have the baby tonight. And so sure enough, she had the baby, and she had a blanket. She brought the baby up really, really warm, and she placed it in a manger so that the... Where baby Jesus go? Where are you? Here he is. She placed him in a manger with straw so that he'd be nice and warm. Do you want to put, put baby Jesus with Mary? There we go. Perfect. Now, while all this excitement was happening, out in the fields where the trees are, where the trees are, I know it's a candle because it's made out of these guys. Out where the trees are, there were shepherds, and the shepherds were watching their sheep. Hang on carefully. The shepherds were watching their sheep, and all of a sudden, the angel came to them and started singing, this is an amazing night. There's a baby that's been born who's going to be special to everybody. And they said, we've got to go. We've got to go see the baby. So they went, and they took baby lambs, and they went to the manger where the baby was, and they saw the baby. 
And meanwhile, while all that was going on, there were three wise men who lived far, far away. And they'd been traveling a long time because they heard that this baby was going to be born. And so the three wise men came and said, we need to come and we need to give gifts to the baby. There's one wise man and he brought gold. There's a room for the wise men. And here's another wise man and he brought frankincense. Yeah, he smells good, doesn't he? He's made out of these things. And then there was another wise man and he brought myrrh. Okay? Anybody know what gold, frankincense, and myrrh are? You know what they are? Well, gold, where is it? There's, I there's, some gold in this. And there's something that's got gold in it. Well, when, back in Jesus' time, if you were going to give a gift to a king, you would bring gold to say, I know that you're a king and here's some gold for you. So who would like to place the gold? There you go. You can have a look at it. You want to show the boys so they can see it? Yes? Yeah, so that's gold. So that means that they thought Jesus was so important that he should have the same kind of gift as a king. And they brought frankincense. Anybody here know what incense is? Have you used incense before? It's hard to do this with a microphone. Do you have some in your house? Can you take some out? There's a little hole in the corner there. You can pull one out. Can you pull it? And then let me see if I can pull the plastic down a little bit. There. Oh, can you pull one out? Yeah. So that, this is incense. I've turned it upside down. You're supposed to hold it by the stick part. There you go. Now, can you smell it? What does it smell like? Show the boys. See if they can smell it. Yeah, it smells nice. Eh? Anybody here like really asthmatic? We can light it on fire and see how it smells. No? Maybe not? No, maybe, maybe we won't. We'll be good, okay? We won't light it on fire much as we want to. But it used to be, and sometimes even still, people would light incense and the smoke would go up into the air and they would pray to God and their prayers would go up in the smoke. And so they brought frankincense to Jesus to say, you are as close to God as anybody we've ever met. And when we pray to you, our prayers are going to go up to God. And so that was why they brought frankincense. And myrrh, I don't have any because I forgot to get some this morning. But any, do you have a real Christmas tree at your house or a, a plastic Christmas tree? Pretend one because you're pretend. Pretend. allergic to you. <laughs> right, your grandpa's allergic to real Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a real Christmas tree, have you ever touched it and your fingers get all sticky yeah. from the pine tar? Yeah? Well, myrrh is like pine tar. And they used it, they would scrape it off of a plant, and they used it for medicine. And, and even indigenous people, they use pine tar for medicine. They'll use it, they'll put it on a, a like if you cut your finger, they would put it on a cut, or they put it in a tea, or they make it into a salve. And so myrrh means healing. It means that Jesus is going to heal the world. Isn't that amazing? So those are what the three gifts are. And that's the story about how Jesus came into the world on Christmas. What do you think? Pretty amazing, eh? You got a question, JJ? No? You're good? Okay. Then you can just keep the poppers and we're going to sing another song. Let's sing another song? Okay, let's sing. If you can go back and sit, you can move your chair if you like, or just leave it there. I think it's fine. And if you'd like to come up and look at all of these a little bit later, you and then I'm going to put them all back in the box for next year, wrap them all up. So, thank you for listening to my story. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
it's been a difficult year for a lot of people in a lot of ways. And I started out the year closing down the furniture bank that we had worked so hard to create because people didn't have housing in which to put the furniture in that we were collecting. And food bank use was up how many, well, how many percent this year was it up? Oh, it went, it's up to 578 people coming a month. Yeah, it's like double from last year. It, food bank use is, is up this year. And Carolyn Harding and I sit on the Communities of Faith Commission at our regional council. And we meet every month. And at every meeting this year, we received a request from a church to close. And two churches in our South Simcoe cluster closed this year. And that's a terrible loss for people whose parents and grandparents celebrated Christmas together in those churches every year. And so I think about them and the grief that they must feel at that change. And it troubles me that people are more divided and anxious and angry than ever. And there are fewer places for them to go to feel at peace. There's this wretched sense of grief among people who long for what used to be. And we as a society somehow have forgotten how to listen and how to forgive. There are times I could lose hope, but every year, every year, we light the first Advent candle and we say hope, hope, don't stop hoping. And then we light the second candle and we pray for peace, peace in our hearts and peace in our world. And then we light the third candle, joy, even when to feel joy seems ridiculous, we light that pink candle and we listen to Mary's words and we try. And today there's the fourth candle, love. And because Christmas Eve fell on the fourth Sunday of Advent this year, we lit the Christ candle in the center, the white candle, the one that represents the Christ child among us. It feels like a cliche to keep saying that God is love, but it's, it's true. It's so true. I think the closest we ever get to God is the feeling we experience when we gaze into the face of a newborn baby. And there's a lot of baby, a lot of pressure put on that baby that's born this night. Some people wanted a political leader. And others wanted a warrior. And still others wanted a hero. And we still want those things from the one that we call Savior. And yet that baby became none of those things. He became so much more, not by might, not by power. Our song of faith says that we sing of Jesus, a Jew, born to a woman in poverty, in a time of social upheaval and political oppression. He knew human joy and sorrow. So filled with the Holy Spirit was he, that in him people experienced the presence of God among them. We sing praise to God incarnate. Jesus announced the coming of God's reign, a commonwealth not of domination, but of peace, justice, and reconciliation. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. He crossed barriers of race, class, culture, and gender. He preached and practiced unconditional love. Love of God, love of neighbor, love of friend, love of enemy. And he commanded his followers to love one another as he loved them. The risen Christ lives today, present to us and our source of hope. In response to who Jesus was and to all he did and taught, to his life, death, and resurrection, and to his continuing presence with us through the Spirit, we celebrate him as the Word made flesh the one in whom God and humanity are perfectly joined, the transformation of our lives, the Christ. Let us pray. <coughs> come, thou long-expected Jesus, come into our hearts, come into the world, for people are walking in darkness. Be for us a great light. For people are hungry and terrified. Be for us a great light. For people are angry and don't know what to do. Be for us a great light. 
for people are in need of healing. Be for us a great light. Holy One, born this night, the truth, the way, and the light for those who follow, come. Come and yet again bring the words that center us and give us comfort. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, we've come to the end. It's time to sing Silent Night. So let's just remain seated as we sing. Let your body sink into your chair. Feel the presence of God wrapping around you as we sing together. Do you want to turn the lights off? You want to sit in the dark? Okay, Judah, can you hop back to the back? Or Peter can. Peter, Peter's behind you. Just turn the lights off.